Hello everyone, welcome back to Royalty Soaps and the Royal Creative Academy, a completely free soap making program where I teach you guys how to make cold process soap. Since launching the initial three videos, I have had a lot of requests for more videos in this series, and that is what we're doing today. We are going to be making soap with essential oils and natural botanical colorant and embed additives. I tried to make this project as inexpensive as possible, per usual. That's one of the top mission statements of this series is to make beautiful soap, but also make it with things that you have at your local grocery store and on a budget. Soap making can be a very expensive hobby and I am trying to minimize that expense for you and be a consumer advocate. That being said, some of the colorants and additives we are using today are completely optional. The only thing that you have to do to make an essential oil soap is to have a base cold process soap recipe like the one that we use in the Royal Creative Academy and add the proper amount of a high quality essential oil for fragrance and that's it. Everything else on top of that is just icing on the cake. So if it's not in your budget, don't feel bad about it and you can just skip those optional ingredients. Before you begin making soap at all, if this is the first video you're stumbling upon, go back to the beginning of this playlist. That is where I will tell you all about lye safety, where you can find the ingredients, give you free PDFs with entire instructions and equipment lists. I'll teach you all about safety with soap making. We'll make a couple of batches so that you kind of get the feel for it and then come back to this video. And without further ado, let's make some soap. Today I'm using the basic beginner recipe and I have prepped my lye water and oils as outlined in the how to measure ingredients and prep your area for soap making Royal Creative Academy video. So the soap I'm making today is going to be one color and I am adding some spirulina and chlorella powder. I have two teaspoons of both powders and they weigh roughly six grams a piece. This is going to turn our our soap a lovely green color and hot tip if you would like your soap to be even more vibrant and concentrated you can actually add these colorants to a really warm oil and let it sit for a few days soak up all of the goodness and really get saturated and you will get even more pigmentation I however don't like to wait that long so <laughs> I'm just adding it straight into the oils I'm gonna mix it in with my scrapey a scrapey spatula and remember, it's up to you about whether or not you want to add any colorant to your soap at all. Maybe you want to leave it plain. You don't want any embeds. It will be cheaper if you do it that way. So if you want a plain and uncolored essential oil soap, you obviously will be skipping this step. To help save you guys some money, I bought my essential oils from the same place I bought my powdered natural colorants. These are from Nature's Garden. And in today's soap, we're going to be using some orange essential oil, some Siberian fir needle essential oil, and some clove bud essential oil. So how much do we add to our batch? Well, good question. I always use eocalc.com to help me determine the usage rate for my essential oils. Each one has a different usage rate. So it's very, very helpful and very prudent to go ahead and put it through a calculator just to make sure you're not adding too much. Certain oils like clove bud here can be very hot and potentially irritating to the skin. So we want to make sure we're not adding too much of anything. And I will have a very brief tutorial at the end of this video showing you how to use the EO calc in case you found it a little bit difficult to navigate. Now I've been making soap a really long time. So I'm I'm going to measure my essential oils straight into my oil base, but if you feel uncomfortable doing this, you can always measure them out into a separate container. Of course, all of my calculations are based on my mold and batch size. So for my particular batch, I'm going to be adding 0.925 ounces of orange, 0.64 ounces of fir needle, and 0.27 ounces of 
clove bud. If your scale is like mine, it may only count in increments of five. So 0 0.25, 0 0.3, 0 0.35, and so on. So I always round to the nearest five. The amount of clove bud essential oil I can add is 0 0.27 ounces, but because I know it's a hot oil, I'm gonna err on the side of putting a little less in and just put 0 0.25 ounces in. This already smells so amazing. And using my spatula, once again, I'm just going to mix all of those essential oils into my oil base. Perfect. Honestly, I love doing one color essential oil soaps because I love not having to do that many dishes. <laughs> We have our color additives in, we have our fragrance additives in, and we have our oils all ready to go at the proper temperature. So now I can add my lye water solution already pre-mixed here. I'm just gonna set it on my table, unscrew the lid, use both hands to pour into my oils and replace the lid and screw that on tight. Now I'm gonna set this out of the way so that I can go rinse it off later. And it is time to stick blend. So I'm gonna put my stick blender into my batch, give it a good burp. You see all those bubbles coming out. You don't want that in your soap batter. And we're gonna blend until about medium trace. Because I only have one color, I feel a little more confident in blending. That way I can tell texture the top sooner and add my botanical additives. <laughs> I blended this soap batter for about 30 seconds to 45 seconds. Different essential oils will do different things to your batches. Some of them speed up how fast your batch is moving. Some of them slow them down just like fragrance oils. So if you're unfamiliar with an essential oil you're working with, just start slow. You can always blend a little bit more, but it's really hard to slow something down once it's sped up. This is looking nice. It's at about, you know, a thin to medium consistency here. There's no oil on top. All of the color is blended in. So we're just gonna go ahead and pour it into our mold. Got my purple mold all ready to go. So I'm just gonna pour this in, breaking the fall with my spatula. I know it's only one color, but it still can add some unnecessary air bubbles in there if you drop from too high. I like to err on the side of caution with these things. <laughs> wow, my whole soap room smells like lovely essential oils. I'm gonna give this a little jiggle. It's still relatively runny. I do have a little bit of of soap batter left. So I'm just gonna drizzle that on top. And it doesn't matter if it's 100% perfect because I'm gonna be spoon texturing this anyway. So don't worry about it. Also, your area may not look as clean as mine does right now. That's okay. That's why we have Clorox disinfecting wipes. You can always clean it up later. Don't be too hard on yourself. Remember, I've been making soap for over 10 years. So my area may look a little different from yours. That doesn't mean you're not gonna end up with an amazing batch of essential oil soap. I'm gonna scrapey scrapey out all the rest of this. I like to make sure, especially when a soap is behaving as well as this one is, that I get every single little bit out because uh, I don't like to waste anything. While this is sitting up, let's talk about our top decorations. Like I said earlier, you don't have to add them, but today I'm going to be adding some star anise, some pink pepper, peppercorn, and some dried orange slices. All of these are from Soma Sundries. Soma Sundries is an amazing additive supplier owned by Julie from Ophelia Sopery and her family. Obviously this video isn't sponsored, but I have found this small business to be incredibly reliable when it comes to quality additives. They also always throw in a little pack of seeds to every order, which I love. I can't wait to grow these. This soap is looking ready to texture. Some of the glossiness is starting to go away and I find that that is the perfect time to do a spoon texture because it's thick enough to hold the form of the spoon, but not so thick that it creates breaks or cracks in the batter. Any spoon will do. You got a plastic spoon, you got a walnut, 
Walmart spoon like me, they'll all do. There we go, just a light spoon texture for me personally today. And now for our additives. I mean, just look at these oranges. Every single one is usable and perfect. A good money saving tip is to cut your oranges in half so you don't have to use the whole thing. And then you can decorate two soaps for the price of one. Just gonna set that right in the middle here. It looks like a fan. <laughs> Last little orange here. Perfect. I'm gonna add mine right in front of each little orange piece. Some may be slightly off center. Some might be right in the middle. I kind of like the look of the ones off center a little bit here. And then we're gonna add the pink peppercorns on. I'm gonna throw mine on here kind of willy-nilly, but you could be really specific if you wanted to and just add some to one side or down the middle. It's all up to you. And here is our first essential oil soap. I'm going to spritz the top very liberally with rubbing alcohol. I find that essential oil soaps tend to get soda ash on the top of the bars more often then the soap scented with fragrance oil. So I like to come in two or three times after the soap has been made to just give it another spritz. I have also found that soaps that haven't been blended for long enough also typically get soda ash more often. If you really, really blend it really, really good, you're gonna decrease your chances. But this soap right here is complete. Now I'm gonna set this aside for at least three days. We're gonna have to wait three days to cut it. I know. It it feels like such a long time, but believe me, it'll be worth it so that you get a nice clean unmolding. After three days, this is what my soap looks like. You can see the shade of green has turned to be a little bit darker. And let me show you the part that hasn't been exposed to the air. So I pulled this out a few hours ago and it's gotten a lot darker on the sides, but look at the bottom. It's still bright, bright green. Isn't that crazy what being exposed to the air will do for a soap loaf? So using my ruler here, I'm just gonna mark on all of the inch lines and then I will use my soap cutter that is suggested in the Royal Creative Academy user guide. All right, just gonna place my soap right on here, line it up with my little cheese cutter, press down gently while holding the batch. And this is what it looks like on the inside. Once again, super green on the inside though, a little dull on the sides and I am sorry to say that it will end up looking more like how it does on the sides than on the inside. <laughs> In my experience, this is kind of just the nature of working with natural colorants. If you're wanting really bold, neon, super, super bright colors, you're gonna be better off using iron oxides and micas. But I do think that there is a loveliness that goes with natural pigments too that absolutely cannot be ignored. I love the little decorations on top of this bar. And let me tell you, it smells amazing. I might even have to use this essential oil blend for some of my fall and winter products because it smells a little bit spicy. Here's another up close of the bars on top. You can see the star anise and those pink peppercorns. And don't forget that if you've chosen to opt for a knife and a cutting board, you're still going to end up with beautiful bars of soap. You don't have to have all the fancy fixings. I know that I have a really big soap cutter in my studio, but but all forms of soap making, including natural soap making and soap making with essential oils can be done relatively inexpensively. I'm so glad you decided to join me in today's little tutorial video and be sure to tag me in your essential oil soap creations if you use this tutorial as a guide. And now that you can see my finished bars and our project is completed, let me go ahead and teach you how to use the essential oil online calculator. 
And now for a super quick tutorial on how to use eocalc.com. So as you can see, here are all the essential oils that you can blend up and find usage rates for. I'm gonna scroll back up to the top and calculate my own blend. That's gonna take you to the calculate your usage rate page. And the first thing I like to do is tell the calculator which product I'm making. Most of the time it's cold process soap. The calculator tells you only to add in the amount of oils in your soap formula. So that's what I'm going to do. There are 37 ounces of oils in our basic beginner recipe. And then I'm gonna come right up here to the essential oil area and I'm gonna tell the calculator which oils I want to use. So the first one that I wanna use the most of is orange. Next up is fur needle. And finally, the clove bud. I want most of my soap to smell citrusy. So I'm making the orange essential oil 50% of my blend. Let's try 20% clove bud and 30% fur needle. This creates a total of 100%, so we can scroll to the bottom and ask the calculator to give us the usage rates. Shazam, safe usage rates. So I'm gonna keep scrolling until I see my usage rate grid. If I want a light smelling scent, I can use 1%, and I can work my way all the way up to 5%. Now you may notice something here. One of these percentages is red. That means we have exceeded the maximum recommended safe usage limit for cold process soap, meaning there's too much clove bud. So I need to reduce the amount in my essential oil blend if I want to do a strong usage rate for all oils. Let's go back then and change the clove bud to 15% of the recipe instead of 20 and then we will bump our fur needle to 35. And now you see everything is in the green. So I can safely use the lightest amount or the strongest amount. And I love to do the strongest. So these are the numbers that I use today in the video for each of our essential oils. Now maybe you wanna use essential oils in your soap, but you don't know how to create your own blend. Well, that's okay because EOCalc actually has some pre-made blends for you to look at. You can go up here to this tab, browse essential oil blends, and they will show you a whole bunch of fantastic foolproof blends that you can use in your products. I am actually a huge fan of quite a few of these, including the Alluring blend. I love the smell of Ylang Ylang or Ylang Ylang, however you like to say it, and the Bamboo blend. It smells so fresh and delightful. You can also go up to the recommendation tab and they will show you some essential oils to start out with as a beginner and some essential oil tools to make your essential oil journey a lot easier. Well, I hope you guys really enjoyed today's video. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below. And if you choose to make a soap with essential oils using this tutorial as a guide, tag me on Instagram, tag me on TikTok so I can see all of your beautiful creations. And if you have a request for more Royal Creative Academy videos, whether or not they are strictly cold process soap making, I would be willing to expand um, the tutorials for you guys if you wanted to learn melt and pour soap making or sugar scrubs or candles, whatever it is, let me know. This series is always going to be 100% free. And like I said before, I will always try to make things as budget friendly and do one stop shopping for you guys because again, I love this community. I love helping you all out. And I just love seeing all the creativity that comes out when people get to try a hobby and a passion for the first time. It's so incredible. And until the next video, you guys have an absolutely royal day and bye for now.